Hello everyone, welcome to Topaz Tuesday. This is episode one of a new program that I'm gonna try. Every Tuesday I'm gonna put out a new video about a Topaz plugin just because I love them so much. Hello everyone, welcome to my new series, Topaz Tuesday. This is Gary D. Tynecourt from wellthanasnapshot.com and I'm gonna try to introduce you to a new plugin or a new feature from Topaz every Tuesday. In this version, we're gonna talk about an update to Denoise AI. They've added batch processing, and this could be very helpful if you have a bunch of photos, maybe shot under similar low light conditions, and you wanna have them all denoised all at the same time. Now, in doing this, they recommend you denoise the images first before doing any other processing. So if you shot a JPEG, you could just bring it right into Denoise AI have it remove the noise, and then send it over to whatever image editing program you're gonna to use to finish the job. If you shot raw, one method I'm gonna show is to bring it into a program like Lightroom and then export TIFF files because Denoise AI doesn't work with raw files. You can only work with DNG, JPEG, or TIFF files. So if you export a bunch of TIFF files, you can import them into Denoise AI and then it can process them. And I find it, you know, it's probably a little bit better for quality if you work with a TIFF file because you can save it over and over again and you're not recompressing it. I'll show you both in this example, once with the JPEGs and once with the TIFF files. It will take a little longer with the TIFF files. If you happen to have a slow computer, you're probably better off using the JPEG files, but that's up to you and your workflow. So the first thing I'm going to do is click open and we're going to go to a folder that I have a bunch of JPEGs in. So I've already exported these JPEGs from raw files and I'm just going to select them all. And this is the new batch processing feature. It loads them all up into Denoise AI and you can see that you get the list of files and a preview because I have split turned on. I can see the before and after. And what I like to do is move this little box around till I find an area where I can look at the image where there's a section that's in shadow and then there's a section that has some detail because you want to see where the noise is and you want to see where the details are because you're trying to remove noise and you're trying to preserve details. So that is going to vary per image. But uh, for example here, if I come down somewhere around here, I can see you know, noise in the dark areas and around the candle. And I can see a little bit of detail in the shirt. So this is a, a good starting point. Now, when I come over to this side, my options for processing this is I can use this program like the new Denoise AI, or I can use it like the little bit older AI Clear. And you can use whichever one works best for you but they claim that the denoise ai is the obviously the newer more modern version it works better because it's using the machine learning to help eliminate the noise now once you've chosen that you can do it manually with the sliders and i would recommend that or you can try auto so if you want to give auto a try first you can hit auto it will figure out what it needs to figure out and then if you come back to manual you can see what it did, and then you can look and see if you agree with how well it did. If you don't agree, now you can continue in manual, and you can say, well, I'd like maybe a little bit more noise reduction than that. Uh, maybe that's a little bit too much. And you can find your sort of happy medium. And then maybe you think, well, it needs more detail. And the sharpness is probably all right. If there's color noise, you can also increase the color noise reduction all right and you can click on each image and check them all out if you want to but if they were all shot in the same lighting conditions like these images were i think i can pretty much trust that if the first one looks okay the other ones probably will look okay as well now i can also look around to other areas that have detail and just make sure that it really does look good So I'm pretty happy with that. Now, all you have to do when you're done with that is click process, and it's gonna ask you what kind of output you want. 
So do I want to convert the file format? No, it's already a JPEG. I want to keep it a JPEG. It's going to add the suffix denoise so you can tell the difference between the new file and your old file. And then do I want to save it to the same source directory? In this case, I do because I already created a special folder for uh, those JPEGs. They all came from that same place, so we'll put the new files with them. And then you can assign a quality because you are making a JPEG and there will be some compression. So the higher the number you set, the better the quality of the JPEG will be with the less compression. All right, and then keep the color profile. Yes, I want the profile that the camera shot. And that's it. Once you click process, you will see that it will apply those changes to your photos and save the files. And then when it's done, over here, it will tell you how much time it took to do each image. So if your computer is a little bit slower, it is good to do JPEGs because they'll take a little bit less time than when doing larger TIFF files. So you can see there, the first one took about 18 seconds to process. Now I'll probably fast forward through the rest of this so you don't have to sit through it. And then we'll see what they look like. Here you can see that they all took around 17 seconds to process, which is not bad. The one thing I wish they would add to the software is this should be a clickable link here that takes you to the finished file, but I really don't think they have that in here just yet. Again, this is a beta version of the program, so they may continue to add things, but so far, even the beta version seems to be working very well. So, all right, let's go over and take a look at what these files look like. Okay, so here we can see the difference between the regular JPEG and the uh, denoise JPEG. So let's zoom in and see if we can see any difference. All right, so here I can see there is less noise and a little more detail in this photo. And if I move around, I can see that the background looks a little bit cleaner, especially around the candle. Nice clean detail around the pottery. All right, so it seemed to work really well. Now let's head into the next process where we try it with a TIFF file. All right, method number two is if you're in Lightroom and you have your raw files, you may want to export them as TIFF files before putting them into Denoise AI. Denoise AI does not work on raw files. So if I click open and I go to the TIFFs folder and I'll select a bunch of photos that have not been worked on. I'm not going to pick too many because it will take a long time. And so here you can see it's processing. You'll notice that when you work with a large TIFF file, this takes a whole lot longer because the computer's got a lot more processing to do. So if you happen to have a fairly slow computer, you might want to stick to doing this with the JPEGs. Again, I'm going to use the Denoise AI. I'll try auto first just to see what it, it's going to do. And um, I'm going to then increase the noise reduction because I think this photo could use with more noise reduction and more detail recovery. And I'll look around at a couple different places. Just a little more noise reduction. All right, that looks okay. Now, it's going to process a whole bunch of them, so it's going to take a few minutes. Again, uh, I'm not going to convert the file. It's going to stay as a TIFF file. It's going to add that little uh, denoise onto the file name. Uh, save to the source directory. This time I'll say no. I want to add it to um, a new folder. We'll call this one Denoise Tiffs. Okay, no compression, although if you wanted compression, you could choose LZW or zip. And then 16 bit bit depth and keep the color profile. Yes, I'll leave it the way it is. And then we'll process it. So here you can see that it took about 22 seconds per file in most cases. And now we'll check out what they look like. Here we can see the comparison of the original image. This is the TIFF image. And this is the image that was run through Denoise. 
So if I look in the dark areas here, you can see the noise and even the banding lines that are there. And that is almost completely gone here. And you can still see that there's plenty of detail in the jacket. If we come up here, you can see all the noise in the uh, little reflection from the candle. And it's much cleaner up here. You can see on his face, there's less noise and more detail. The background here and here all look cleaner and better. Denoise AI continues to work really well. And if you'd enjoyed this video and thought that this might help with your workflow, I'll put some affiliate links down in the description below so you can check it out for yourself. Again, this has been Gary DeTonicourt from more than a snapshot.com. And I hope to see you on the next Topaz Tuesday.